<laughs> Are you ready to rock? Let's do it, people. Let's do it. All right. This is our list of topics. Right here. Go get your topic sheet. Look at that, bad Larry. Right there. We've got rotation and revolution and torque. That's what this video is all about, Charlie Brown. Rotation versus revolution. All right. Very simple. I'm going to demonstrate. That was one of them. Well, actually, let me put this chair here. Okay, there's my demonstration, my demonstration. I demonstrated for you rotation and revolution. Okay, what's rotation? That's analogous to spinning. When something is spinning on the center of axis, like a top or a figure skater or a you know, ball. You take a ball and you boom, spin a ball. That's rotation. So it's an object spinning about its center, its axis. Revolution, bring the man down. No, not that kind of revolution. Revolution is when you have one thing going around a different thing. So you need two things for revolution, you need one for rotation. So that's very simple. So what we're gonna be doing is torque, and torque is about rotation. It's about something rotating about an axis. So I could take a, where'd my meter stick go? I don't know where my meter stick went. Okay, well I don't need a meter stick. We'll take one of these bad Larrys. Right here, and we'll take this and uh, we'll, 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 we'll rotate it. Boop, 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 boop. I rotated it. I made it move about its center. All right, its center, its axis center here, and it's rotating. So that is what torque is all about. As a matter of fact, I was applying a torque. I was torquing, okay? You hear what I'm torquing about? <laughs> you hear what I'm torquing about? Torque. Okay. So I'm applying a torque. Torque sounds like, oh man, this is going to be complicated, this torque thing. It sounds like a nasty word. Oh, I don't know if I want to do torque. Ah, uh, now, 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 torque. <coughs> and that's how you spell it. Not like this. Not like this. No, no, no. That is, the, that would be like if you were, hey, hey, you're the monkeys. We all remember the monkeys from the 60s, okay? There was a Peter Torque. He was in the group, and that's how he spelled his name. That's not how we spell it. We spell it like that. Torque. Now, what is torque? Very simple. We just had gone through many force videos. This unit is on forces. Torque is a force. So it's in the force unit. Torque is a force which causes something to rotate. That's it. So it's a force that causes something to rotate. So if I were to take this and apply force upwards, or let go and let gravity apply a force down, it falls, goes straight up and straight down. It's not rotating. However, if I hold that at its pivot point, okay, that's the term we need to know, pivot point, which the technical term for that is fulcrum. I'll write that down for you. Fulcrum. Fulcrum, which is the same thing as pivot point. Pivot point, the point of pivotation. Okay, that is the fulcrum. So here's the pivot point. That's a rotation point, the fulcrum. And if I want to get this to rotate, I apply a force at some distance, okay, some distance from the pivot point. Oh, look at that, rotating. Oh, look at it, watch this. Oh, rotation, yeah. Here, rotation. Oh, over here, rotation. Here, rotation. Here, oh, no rotation, ah, huh? no rotation. It's Italian. I'm applying a force here, but it's not rotating. Here, not rotating. Why? Because I'm applying it at the pivot point. When you apply a force at the pivot point, you can't get something to rotate. You have to apply your force away from the pivot point. Then you can get something to do some rotation. All right, so we have to have a force applied at some distance from the pivot point to get us a torque to cause that object to rotate. In fact, it's physics. So you know we got to have an equation. You can't have nothing without equations in physics. So what's the physics equation for torque going to be? Well, it's got to have something to do with force, and it has to have something to do with distance from the pivot point. Because if I don't have, if I have no distance from the pivot point, in other words, I'm right at the pivot point, I can't get this to rotate. If I move it any distance away from the pivot point, boop, rotate, rotate. There's our equation. Our equation for torque. Torque 
equals force times distance. Very simple. Okay, these are, this unit has simple equations, right? F is equal to ma, fw is equal to mg, ff is equal to fn times mu. Uh, earlier I said there are only three equations. Um, well, actually, I, I lied. I forgot about the torque. I was putting torque in this unit. So we're adding torque to the unit. So sorry, there is four. There's four. It's still a simple three, three thing, variable. Looking for the, the word variable uh, equation. So it's not a difficult equation. Torque is equal to force times distance. You have to apply a force from a distance from the pivot point. So that D is going to be how far away we are from our pivot point. In fact, check this out. This is something you know is true. You know something about torque. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because when I want to get something to rotate, if I apply a force here, oh, man, that was hard. But if I apply a force a longer distance from the pivot point out here, Easy. Mm -hmm. You know that. Because when you go to open a door, okay, the door is going to rotate on the hinges. The hinges are the fulcrums. The hinges are the pivot points. And when you go to open that door, do you go ahead and push on that door from a location right next to the pivot points. Okay, I'm going to show you. There's a door over here, people. We're going to try this. You, you go ahead. You, you try this at home. Not for professionals only, okay? All right. Oh, actually, that's not the one I wanted to show you. I want to show you this door over here. Okay, see that door? See that door right there, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to walk out, okay? You're watching. Focus, focus. I'm going to leave. I'm leaving. That's it. I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to push. It was hard to do that because you know you don't put in here even the handle. I've got to apply a torque, right? I have to apply a torque to the handle. And of course, I apply it out to the farther away from the pivot point. And then when I go and push, I push from here because it's a long distance from the pivot point. That gives me more torque. You know that. You do. You know something about torque. You're not going to push. You're not going to turn the handle in and push here. Nobody does that. Okay. That's hard. Ooh, easy. Ah, not easy. Easy. Okay. Simple. So you know something about torque. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. All right. Yeah. Let's see. I know it was scary. Sorry. Didn't mean to frighten you there. Now let's get back to it then. All right. So torque is generated by applying a force at some distance from the pivot point. So we can see in our equation. We can apply massive amount of force, but if we only are a smidgen away from the, the pivot point, like I was trying to do in that door, I don't generate a lot of torque because torque isn't equivalent just to force. So if I generate a lot of force and I apply it a long way from the pivot point, ah, a piece of cake. In fact, this has something to do with what's called leverage. And I was that Archimedes person. I guess he was a real smart person back in the day. And he said, give me a large enough lever and I can move the world, yes. So you know this is true. When you take a wrench and you go ahead and you try to turn a bolt, all right? You try to turn that bolt. When you hold the wrench, do you hold the wrench right up next to the neck or next to the bolt? No, you don't do that. You know you don't do that because you're not going to be able to turn the thing. So you know you have to hold it as far away on the handle as possible from the pivot point because you generate more torque. I didn't say more force. You generate more torque. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So that's torque. And a very simple torque problem would be one like, no, oh, where'd it go? Where did it go? Here it is. It would be one like, right there, go get this. Go get it. Essential documents. Okay, torque and equilibrium. I'm going to have it listed as torque and equilibrium, so it'll be down near the bottom, alphabetical. Go get it. We're going to go through these. Here we go. Number one, torque and equilibrium problems. So let's dive in. You got it? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. No, you, you go ahead. You go ahead. Got it? Okay, good. Here we go. So question number one. A wrench has a handle 20 centimeters long. If a force of 100 newtons is applied to the end, 
of the wrench and how much torque is generated. Okay, it's a very simple problem. All right, you, you piece of cake, right? I mean, torque is equal to force times distance. That's it. It allows me to figure out how much torque is generated. It gives me a force. This is a level one problem. So it's 100 newtons and the distance. Ah, be careful. It's at 20 centimeters. What do you have to do? Mm -hmm. You know, you know. You have to put that into meters. So 0.2 meters. Point two zero meters, centimeters to meters is two positions, two spots to the to the left. All right, so now I do the math. Oh, I forgot I'm gonna put the units in. I'm doing units. Uh, I wanna look at the units, do a unit analysis. So let's go ahead and calculate our torque. So 0.2 times uh, 100 is 20 units newton meters. 20 newton meters. All right. A lot of times in physics, if you have two units put together, two or more units put together, it will sometimes, it'll, it will, well, more often than not, it'll be given some other name, like a watt or a joule or a newton. Um, because a newton, if we go to a newton, actually do a unit analysis on what a, a newton is, it comes from mass. It comes from force. It's a newton. It's a newton is, is a measure of force. It goes mass times acceleration. Well, what do you have? Kilograms for mass, meters per second squared, Right, for your acceleration. So if you multiply kilogram meters per second squared, if you multiply those, that's what you get. You get a kilogram meter per second squared. So we said, well, let's call that a Newton. And so many times in physics, combining units, you give it a new name. So kilogram times meter per second squared is called a Newton. All right, so here we have Newtons times meters. And so is that given something? No, it's not. It's just a Newton meter. Wow, you set me up. You made me think there's gonna be something special. Sorry. <laughs> It's called a Newton meter. In fact, sometimes truck commercials will talk about how many foot pounds of torque their engine can generate, that, 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 that pickup truck. And um, so a foot pound is the English, the British version of metrics that we got, of measurement that we use. Well, of course, we don't use the international system or metric system. But in science, we can't use the British imperial system, which is here in America, what we still use. We don't use that. So we don't say foot pounds. This would be foot pounds. We say Newton meters. You can say meters, Newtons if you want. It just doesn't flow as well. So we go with Newton meters. All right, so that's the unit. Um, and that was a very simple problem. That was not a difficult problem to do. Uh, let's try another one. Let's try another one. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, one more here. We'll do number two and we'll. We'll end this video here. Number two says the following. A 200 Newton force is applied to the right end of a two meter long board. So you've got this board, it's two meters long. So this whole thing here, whoop, this whole thing here is two meters. And we're applying a force to one end of the board. So we're applying a force uh, to one end. Okay, the board has a pivot on the left. So the pivot point for the board is here on the left, and we're applying the force over here on the right side. Okay, right end. So 200 newtons. Now, the 200 newtons, however, is not applied directly down. Think about that. Torques, and look at all the examples I've given you. I was generating torque here. Perpendicular to the surface that you're rotating. Perpendicular to the surface I'm rotating. Perpendicular, perpendicular. When I went and opened the door, I'm pushing perpendicular to the door surface. That's another thing you don't do. You don't walk up to the door and push at an angle. If this is my door, I walk and I push this way. I don't go and push like this. You just don't do that. You know you're not going to be able to generate as much torque or rotation. It's just harder. All right, so this question, though, is saying, well, what if we did? What if we did apply the force at an angle? So this is an angle of 30 degrees from the vertical. Okay, so we're applying this force at 30. Now say from the vertical or the horizontal? Nah, what did I just say? 30 degrees away from the vertical. Okay, so let me fix this because we want this is the vertical. And we're applying the force 30 degrees away from the vertical. There's a vertical, there's your horizontal, 30 degrees from that vertical, and we're applying 200 newtons. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate the torque. Torque is force times distance. Torque is force times distance. Well, 
Easy, right? I mean, it's just force times distance. Two meters away, 200 newtons. You know it can't be that easy. You know that. And besides, what we, a torque, by definition, actually, if you were to look, sometimes you will see the torque equation. You'll see it like this. It has T perpendicular. T perpendicular. Uh, the, well, back the truck up. You'll, you'll see it like this. You'll see force perpendicular. I said torque. Sorry, that's my bad. So force perpendicular. So this force is being applied perpendicular to the surface. Okay? Force perpendicular. Now that force is not perpendicular, so what do we have to do? We have to figure out what the force is perpendicular. Triangles don't go away, people. They don't go away. Make a triangle out of that. Put a right angle in there. 200 your hypotenuse. 30 degrees from the vertical. That vertical is what we need to find because that is perpendicular to the surface. Torque is force perpendicular times distance. Let's do the math. So 30 degrees, this is the adjacent side. So that's 0 0.8660 times 200, which I remember is 170 because I just did a problem not too long ago with you. Uh, but we're going to check it. So that's adjacent side. So cosine is uh, cosine 30. It's adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine 30 times 200. Should be 170. Uh, 173. 173. Interesting. Oh, oh, maybe it was 300. I, I'm just going to check something because I might have messed up in another video because in my brain I said, did we do a close side joint? Well, let's just check. It was, I'm just checking something here, people. Hang with me. Hang, hang. Stop falling asleep. Stop it. Oh, that was 300. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. We're all good. We're all good. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't even think about what I was thinking about. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. This comes out to be, oh, crap. Now I forget what I just found. I, just, I forgot. See? Went off on a tangent. Look what happened. Uh, cosine 30. I forgot. I forgot. I did. I just forgot. I'm 200. 173, right? Yeah, 170. Now I remember this. I hit the enter button. Uh, 173. All right. 173 newtons. That's the force that we use in the torque equation. We do not use the 200. We use the force that is perpendicular. The force that is perpendicular to the surface. All right. So let's go ahead and do it. So the force perpendicular was 173. The distance that that force perpendicular is, is still at the edge, it's still two meters away. So I'd go ahead and I would use two meters, multiply that together, you're gonna to get uh, 200, 346. So the torque is 346 Newton meters, all right? So that is problem number two. Problem solved. Um, it is straightforward torque, except that you have to, when you have something at an angle, torque produced at an angle, you have to figure out the vertical because that's the definition of torque. That's the force that will cause it to rotate. Actually, this, this, this rotation here is caused by that vector, but that is actually pushing this way and down at the same time. Remember, you can break a vector up into two components. This has nothing to do with torque. You actually, when you push it in there, you're pushing in on it. That's not going to make it rotate. That's not a torque. It's not a torque force. It's not rotating when you do that. It's only going to rotate when you do this. That's the one we need. All right, we'll wrap this video up and uh, move on to the next video. We'll continue on the more difficult problems and equilibrium. Okay, next topic is actually called equilibrium. All right, be back.